Alright guys, welcome back. This is episode 3 of the Porsche of Peanuts Project. We got a lot done in this episode. Um, there are some really cool tips that you guys can use when you're on your project uh, to be affordable and cheap. It's, it's something that you would really want to pay attention to and check out. Um, there's also a, a tutorial step of how to actually change your timing belt without having to get a flywheel lock. Again, that's just a timing belt. We're not talking about uh, doing a water pump. In the case of the water pump, you'll definitely need like a, a flywheel lock or as I've seen some guys uh, put an Allen key in an opening on the passenger side of the bell house. That's also something you can do. But this uh, video, I've searched and looked on YouTube to see if somebody had a video of doing a 944 uh, timing belt, just a timing belt by itself without having the flywheel, flywheel lock. Didn't find it. So uh, this video covers that. It also goes through showing your timing areas uh, so that you make sure that everything is in line properly before you try to start your engine. Make sure you don't ruin anything. Um, and then there's also a pretty cool surprise at the end, uh, which I think you guys will all love. So I hope this provides you again your motivation to get your project started. If you had a project started and you stopped, maybe this gives you the motivation to get back into it and keep going again. Uh, but take a look at the video. Tell me what you think. As I always say, subscribe below. And, uh, you know, if you like the video, like it, give me some feedback. All right, appreciate it, guys. Here we go. Hey, guys. Uh, real quick, Friday, um, I'm heading over to actually pick up some parts. Not from Advanced Auto, not from AutoZone, uh, not from any of those places. Actually, I'm getting the parts from um, a Craig guy on Craigslist. So, um, real quick, quick, I just want to let you know. Let's try that again. Hey, guys. I uh, want to let you know what I'm up to. It's Friday after work. I'm headed to go pick up some parts. Not from O'Reilly's, not from AutoZone. I'm actually picking these parts up from a fellow Porsche owner or a guy that's selling parts on Craigslist. Uh, so I just want to let you know about this avenue to continue to keep in mind when you're working on your projects. Don't feel like you always have to buy something on eBay or Advanced Auto or O'Reilly's. You can actually buy these same parts on uh, Craigslist, uh, you know, as long as they're decent. They, you know, and you know what you're buying. I'm picking up some reference sensors um, and a bracket. The, the ones that I need to try to start the car, it's going to be incredibly cheaper uh, than going the other routes, uh, even by eBay standards. Uh, and so we're going to get over here. He's just a few minutes away. I'm going to stop by the garage. I'll pick, a, pick up a couple tools, and uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, head over there and uh, see if we can go ahead and make the deal for the parts. Um, so stay tuned. All right, so we're getting started with the project at this point. Um, we're first going to remove the radiator fans to give us clearance. And I'm showing you that there is three bolts, one in the middle, one on the left there, and uh, also one more on the uh, far side um, to the right. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so you'll you take a 10 millimeter socket just like I'm showing right there and, and remove those. And now I'm showing you underneath the car. So this is my first 944 that actually has the oil pan still attached to it. So that's a, a first. It's again a testament to the low miles of the vehicle that uh, that hasn't been really just discarded at this point. But um, that is the bottom and the oil pan. So with that removed, I'm just showing you again the three more 10 millimeter bolts in the same positions as the one up top, one in the middle, two on the sides. I'm giving you a little action camera here showing you um, basically with my off hand as I'm wobbling there, uh, removing the, those 10 millimeter bolts. And so now we're at the bracket for the power steering. And so uh, basically we're decreasing the distance or, or um, collapsing the uh, bracket there so that it relieves the tension to the power steering belt. Um, and actually you move upward. Upward actually uh, brings those two pieces together and decreases it. Um, you want to move those nuts out first and then um, it, it gives the ability for that middle piece to, um, to be adjusted properly. Use some PB Blaster definitely if it hasn't been done in quite some time to make it easier. All right, and so with those as close as possible, you can see that the tension is totally relieved on the belt. And now uh, with just a little bit of effort, um, you'll be able to uh, remove that belt off of the power steering pulley. 
and uh, you of course take that off of the very uh, furthest part out of the crank pulley and that's gone and so now you're free to go ahead and move on to your your air conditioning and alternator belt um, as you can see I've already collapsed that bracket so it's already close and see how easy it comes off I mean it's it's very easy um, and you move that off of the alternator at the top that's the alternator belt and uh, we pull that down and there's that uh, looks like original equipment Pirelli Porsche alternator belt so you toss that to the side and so now I'm showing you the uh, bottom bolts again these are 10 millimeter for the timing covers so it's one two three there's one hidden right up there four that is kind of hard to see and then one in the middle five so you want to go ahead and remove those out of there and as you can see there, there are the corresponding five bolts from the bottom there now on top side um, I'm showing you again there's one and uh, there's there's two that's a second one in the middle there that you want to remove and three um, right there you want to remove those three I was thinking that that was all you needed to do to get it off but if you can look at the very top in that corner there there's a a fourth one that you want to make sure you pick up and get when you're uh, taking your timing covers off and so now with those removed I'm removing the upper portion of the timing cover and uh, with a little bit of effort I'm, I'm dropping that down and uh, again with a little bit more effort <laughs> I think I'm just trying to get some clearance here once we get the clearance uh, it should fall right down there and there it goes and now I'm trying to move the bottom portion of the timing cover off also but I'm restricted by there's a bracket in that corner and I'll show you that in a second what I mean that uh, you want to also remove so as you can see right there there's the hose and I'm going to show you again the hose to the intake system that sits there you ought to remove that that also so that it it gives you uh, more clearance and then you should be able to drop the bottom end of the timing cover down also Now with that done, I'm taking a look at the balance shaft, and oop, I think I see something there already. The balance shaft belt appears, it appears to be broken. Yep, it's broken. So, um, sorry I don't have the greatest focus, but uh, yeah, it, it's broken. This is the balance shaft belt. So this is a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi excuse me, a balance, um, balance shaft, and there's the belt that looked like it's broken. So that's a good indication of what could have parked this car. If that broke, the car would have uh, ran very horribly and scared someone into not driving it. And thus, we may arrive at why the car only has 55,000 miles. So that's very interesting. It's a, it's a very uh, uh, interesting sign. But this is the belt that you don't mind breaking. The timing belt is the one that you really want to be worried about. You don't want your timing belt to break in. And as we go over here, we look and the timing belt, surprise, is intact. So the timing belt looks good. Um, good tension there. That means that the crank at the bottom, which controls the pistons in their position and how they move up, um, is in relative timing to the cams, which have valves that come down into um, the cylinders, which that happens with the interference engine, which this is. And so um, there's no catastrophic issue there. And so now we're actually just removing the bottom side of the balance shaft belt. We're underneath the car again. Um, that is, uh, looks like it just got all gummed up there, um, and again, caused the issue. So we get that done. So now we're at the process where we're ready to remove the timing belt itself. Um, and, uh, we want to first relieve the tension on right there, the, uh, the tensioner there. So we've already loosened up the, the bolt, which was a 17 millimeter bolt. As you can see, I'm trying to show you, give it a good picture here that uh, it relieves the tension on the belt to some degree see that that in it that's what you do to tighten it um, down but you it relieves that tension so that it helps you to remove the belt we're also going to remove this 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 guide here that guide is there so that the teeth from the upper part of that belt at the top don't touch the bottom part of the belt that was something st installed on the later versions 
of the 944s to keep that from happening. And so those are two 10 millimeter bolts. You just remove those and uh, then you get that clearance. Now I thought I can take this belt off from right there. No, that's not correct. You actually have to go up from the top of the cam and, um, and just kind of move it and wiggle it off from there and um, that gets the belt off. So the belt's off. This is actually the new belt on. So the new belt, you have to slide behind the crank pulley, this uh, the, this gear right here. You actually do it at an angle. And I'm trying to show you with my fingers here that you go at an angle to slide it all the way to the very back part of the of the crank, um, the crank pulley. And you'll get it around the teeth. That's the very first thing you want to do is just slide it right behind there. Again, we don't have to use a flywheel lock. We don't have to use anything to lock it in place because uh, we didn't take this piece off. So uh, when you're doing just a timing belt, you can slide it right behind and get it in there. And so now we're going to route everything up as it should be routed now that we have that done first. Again, I'm showing you the pulley there, the, the, the pulley, that uh, the tensioner, excuse me. And so now with that done, we've rerouted everything back as it should. And now we're starting to tension the tensioner to then tighten it down so that we have the proper tension on the timing belt. As you can see there, you can just use a, a wrench, adjustable wrench there. And then we'll put a 70 millimeter on it, which is there. And uh, yep, that 17 millimeter, uh, we're tightening it down, tightening it down for the first time. We actually found that when doing this, uh, the belt was still loose because uh, we weren't we were actually off a tooth. Um, so I think I'll show you in a second that it seemed pretty loose here. Yep, see it was it was too loose. So we had to go out and adjust, take the whole thing off and adjust it one tooth over. And now we're retightening it in. We're checking our tolerances, and um, we actually moved it over one more time after here to get it just right perfectly and so now I'm going to show you to make sure your timing marks are good so this is just a reference point see that little niche there in the niche in the uh, cast that's how you know your timing marks that's not necessary because we didn't uh, we don't have to worry about the position changing because we didn't remove the crank pulley but you do have to do this for the balance shaft there's a niche in that gear and a niche in that cast the same way that you want to make sure line up on the top side of the balance shaft and then when you go below as I'm doing right now there's another mark on the bottom which is the second the second one right here you see that notch there I'm pointing to it it has to line up with that little plastic piece right there um, and then you know everything's good from there you can then uh, uh, tighten your tensioner make sure everything's good and, and get it into place and you should be you should be groovy from there And so now um, I'm putting on the reference sensors. See the tape? Put the tape in those holes. First time I dropped the bolt into that hole and I thought my life is over. Um, we actually, my buddy Alex, fished it out with a, a magnet uh, because it did keep restrict the engine from moving. So we got that out fine. And uh, as we look at here, here is the part that I got from the guy from Craigslist. It's the reference sensors and the bracket all together that we're going to install. That was a doozy. So what a fantastic episode. We got a lot accomplished, didn't we? I mean, to finally hear this car start up from the first time, it was amazing, um, and it was a feat, uh, but we still have a long way to go. While we're able to get it started, there's still some issues with actually getting the fuel from the tank to the engine, necessarily, um, through the fuel system. Again, the fuel let rail is showing that the pressure is getting there and there's fuel in the line, uh, but there is maybe some starter fluid or maybe some things that we have to get going to get the everything working properly. I have to look into that part. So there's a lot more research that I have to do. A couple of tips though. As you saw in the beginning of the video, I did buy uh, the reference and speed sensor and bracket off of a guy from Craigslist. To give you an idea how much I saved on eBay, I thought it was a steal to find uh, those particular parts 
for $199 with free shipping. I thought, okay, well, we're going to spend about $70 for the two parts, the bracket, but I couldn't find a good way to separate everything and put everything together, so $200 was a good deal. I got those parts off of that guy from Craigslist for $40. And, then, you know, I went over to this guy, wonderful experience, named John, works for the University of Michigan. Great guy. This guy was awesome. He's building a Porsche 356 Frankenstein. So he takes the Porsche 356, he has the rear end of a 944, he's going to put a Subaru Boxster engine in it, and then he's going to tie that all together with an electric steering system from a Saturn View. I mean, this guy, light years ahead of where I'm at. I picked his brain for a few minutes, asked him some questions. Um, really cool experience getting to know and understand him. Um, he still has parts available. So, again, I would definitely recommend... Um, with the YouTube, uh, with the uh, Craigslist thing though, being safe of course and discerning, not putting yourself in a situation where uh, something could happen to you in particular. But uh, um, really awesome experience meeting him and, and talking to him for a few minutes. And again, the saving. So again, I want to highlight making sure that uh, when you're looking for parts, you check all your different avenues. Don't settle for a price and think that because you get a price from one place, that's it. Um, and uh, again, what an awesome community that we have of guys that are, are willing to, to make deals with you. This guy, he says, I, I don't need the money. I just want to uh, give these parts away. And you guys can find people just like that, too, with your parts. As long as you call around, you find the right people in your area. Uh, there's a community. Uh, there's a, a community. Um, you know, definitely, I just joined uh, PCA, Porsche Club America. Uh, we're going to see how that experience goes. I got invited to a meet. I'm excited uh, to make it when I can. So, again, uh, this is a wrap-up of the video. You guys, uh, again, get involved. Get your hands dirty. Get them greasy. And let's go. Thanks. Take care.